jock. <laughs> I'll call the meeting to order. And are there citizens waiting to come in? Are there any citizens? I don't see anybody who wants to speak. Okay. So, John, do you have an update for us? Yeah, I just, do you want to just give a minute, just give another minute for Peter to catch in? I think he might be trying to log in. Okay. like he's here. Hey, um, hey, hey, Matt, he's an attendee. Can you make him a panelist? All right. All right. Um, so we can, um, Peter, it looks like Peter, you're here. Um, Joan already, already called me the order. Hi. Yeah, I'm here. Okay. Hey. No? Okay, Joan. Okay, so everybody's on board? Yes. I'll ask the town manager for his report. Thank you. Um, as um, as in the last few updates, it's, it's been a very busy uh, week or, or whatever, how long it's been since we've last met. Um, we're working very hard uh, to adapt to this new way of operating a local government. Our employees are working really hard, doing some excellent work and, and really being innovative, um, you know, our office staff and our program staff, and and then we have our other people that are out uh, doing work every day, uh, keeping us safe, and they're doing tremendous work under this uh, the stress that we're all feeling. So it's really a uh, it's really a testament to how great our employees are, how how well they're performing under this uh, this environment that we're working within. So I really appreciate all their efforts, and um, you know. We're going to keep working hard on, on this going forward. Uh, just a few things that have been happening. Um, the Board of Health last night voted to close Narrow Park, which I'm sure the board will discuss uh, later when we get to that part on the agenda. Uh, there's also been some uh, orders from the governor that the Board of Health uh, also confirmed with regard to construction activity. We've posted that information on our website so people have a better understanding of the specific local uh, measures that the Board of Health uh, wanted to implement as it relates to construction. The transfer station, uh, we've been trying to announce some new hours and uh, pretty much almost there, but it's definitely going to be open at 7 a.m. Tuesday to Saturday, and we're still working on whether we can open Monday as well. Um, and the reason for that is uh, we have employees up there that are working and have to interact with the public. And we want to try to keep the crowds down. So having an extra day, uh, we hope, will uh, spread people out a little bit further. And so we hope to make an announcement on that uh, later this week. But what is definitely in effect is the 7 a.m. opening, which is new uh, mm -hmm. for uh, the, the day Tuesday through Saturday. And uh, we encourage seniors to use that time to, to go there and not have other, as many other people around. As we talked about last week, We've uh, implemented the Families First uh, Coronavirus Response Act, uh, new laws passed by the federal government, and we're working with our employees to use that program um, as needed. CDC mentioned uh, at the end of last week or earlier this week that they recommend everyone to start wearing masks or face coverings. So we've worked uh, with our employees to make sure that if they're working in the public that, that we're following the guidelines. Uh, we are also working very closely with Mass, uh, MEMA, Massachusetts Emergency Management Agency, and they have been, um, Mark has been taking the lead on this, Mark Hall. They've been helping us secure more personal equipment. Uh, we had a shipment, I think, come in this week, and he's, he's planning to get some more for us uh, next week. 
So we appreciate that. We've also, we've also, we've also got a tremendous uh, response from residents and local businesses uh, with donations. People have been very generous uh, either making uh, masks or, or bringing some in that they can. And I have a, actually have a list of people uh, that have been donating in a minute after I finish the rest of my comments. Uh, the other things, uh, we're, we're still, you know, we want people to stay at home and on social distancing, but there are also food establishments that are operating and people still need to eat. So we're finding ways to encourage people to use our local restaurants safely. And um, so we're going to work to do some more promotion of that in the coming days. The Board of Health put out a call for Medical Reserve Corps, and they've got a great response. So that's a new resource that we're going to start working with. We made some changes to the website uh, last night, actually, just to try to, you know, we've had an alert bar running, um, which is good for sort of a short term incident that we're trying to communicate with. But this is uh, have been a longer term um, way of doing things. So we tried to update our website to reflect that. So it should be easier to find some of the information that we're trying to push out there. And we're going to continue to work on it. So any feedback from the public or from the board uh, is greatly appreciated. So as I mentioned, I'd just like to quickly read the list of donations that we've received so far. This is, it, these are donations of masks, uh, of hand sanitizer, of gloves, of face shields, uh, all kinds of different things. Um, and we've, we've received some from um, Poirier family, the Shoba High School, the Bo Acton Boxborough School District, Middlesex Gastroenterology, Lombardo Loam, Insulate Corporation dropped off a bunch of stuff earlier, Roche Brothers, uh, the Anson family, the Lou family, the Churchill family, the Frivazasa family, the Ward family, and the Acton Chinese Language School, the Yang Fan Metro West Bible Church, and the So family. So we really appreciate it. Um, you know, not... You know, we're safe. We need to keep the N95 masks and certain things for our first responders, but there are other employees that need just the regular cloth masks and, and all the all the stuff that we're getting in. We really appreciate. So, thank you to the community and thank you to Acton Box for United Way, who's helped um, to sort of encourage that um, that generosity and and the residents and local businesses have certainly uh, stepped up. So, that's my update. Well, this. This crisis brings out the best in the act. Oh, sorry. Uh, I think I muted you by accident. I meant to mute myself. Okay. Sorry. Okay. I was just saying, I think this crisis brings out the best in the Acton community. So we thank all those who have contributed. And John, the the memorandum you sent to us earlier this afternoon, the operational update, um, was um, a, a, a terrific, you know, very comprehensive and uh, covered all the bases. And um, I can't thank you and the town staff and our first responders enough. Now, I've had quite a few emails about closing NARA. And I drove up there myself, and I noticed off uh, Route 27 on the right side where there's a parking lot for the rail trail, that was jammed. So I think people, instead of going to Narrow, were going there and parking. I know we've kept the rail trail open. Yes, yeah, so we're, um, you know, your next item is to discuss the, the updates. And I think uh, basically with the Board of Health taking that vote last night, uh, we've taken measures to uh, secure the, the property. Um, and I think we're, we've actually had people up there trying to uh, have people tell people to not come there anymore since it's been closed by, by the Board of Health. But one thing that we would, we would need um, if <laughs> for this type of thing to help the police department in particular enforce it would be some some te temporary parking restrictions in the areas nearby. Uh, otherwise, uh, they wouldn't have necessarily the, the authority they need to enforce uh, parking in areas that we don't want people parking. 
John, I had a question about the Board of Health's uh, order. So they closed, did they close the walking path around the pond as well as the fields and other areas? Yeah, the whole park is, is barricaded. Okay. But you can still go on the rail trail slice that goes through Narrow Park, basically? You can take the rail trail up, going up toward Chelmsford or... Well, if you park up towards Chelmsford in that parking lot, and that parking lot was chock-a-block full, so people could walk down. Yeah, well, I mean, if you got on the rail trail and, and down on Concord Road, you could ride through Narrow Park as well. Okay. Yes. So the, 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 um, the, the, you know, the Board of Health discussed this last night. It was a unanimous decision on their their part. I, I had some concerns with it when I expressed uh, in that meeting, but I think that, you know, we need to support the, the, the Board of Health decision at this time. I mean, uh, the Recreation Department and the Board of Health and everyone are just trying to do, you know, everybody's trying to do the same thing. Everybody might have a little bit different opinions on how to go about it. But um, uh, I, I think we need to support the uh, you know, uh, ask the town manager to uh, put in parking uh, restrictions as necessary. I, I also think that, you know, um, in a, and I can uh, pursue this a little bit uh, offline. I think we need to uh, pursue other ways that we m might be able to accommodate residents as um, the weather gets better. Um, I, I think this is going to become a very difficult uh, situation through the summer. Um, you know, I, I'd like to get, you know, try to get ideas on the table for how, how we might accommodate, uh, you know, uh, accommodate people's needs. You know, because I, I think that the conservation lands are not good for, you know, people with a disability who need to walk on a paved path or, um, uh, you know, uh, others who, you know, might not have a sidewalk near their house or be within walking distance of uh, one of the conservation lands. You know, they might need to uh, do that. I mean, in the same meeting last night, um, Heather York was talking about some apartment complexes where, um, you know, children were playing together, which, of course, is bad for virus transmission. Um, but, you know, some of those people might have been taking their, their kids to, to, to NARA to get out. Um, and, you know, now that's not a, a, you know, a way that something that's available to them. Um, I, I think we need to, going forward, need to, to brainstorm um, uh, on, on ways that we, 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 we can accommodate people. But, you know, um, when you're ready, Joan, I'd love to make a motion that we uh, uh, support the Board of Health uh, tonight with, uh, by allowing the town manager to put in parking restrictions where necessary to enforce the Board of Health's order. Well, you can make that motion right now. Okay, I, I, I move that uh, um, uh, that we uh, ask the town manager to um, uh, put in parking restrictions where necessary to support the Board of Health's order to close Narrow Park. Is there a second? Second. Okay, motion made and seconded. Any further discussion? All yes, those Joan, Joan I'd, I'd like to discuss this a little bit more. Okay. Um, you know, I'm... I've gotten quite a few emails from members of the public who are very upset about this. And some of the things they pointed out is that, you know, by gradually restricting all of the public areas in town, you're jamming more and more people into a smaller area. Um, I'm not really convinced that this was a good idea to close Narrow Park. Um, I think that you know, we've got to expect that people are going to want to go out there and walk around the, uh, the pathway. Um, certainly, I agree with, with David Martin about, you know, most of our um, conservation areas are not really accessible for people with disabilities. And, you know, that trail around the outside of Narrow Park is just sure. perfect for people that, you know, have a mobility problem. And I think it should be kept open. I know when Bill was sick, we used it quite a bit. So I, I, so I I'm sorry. Go ahead. I think that you know the. So we do this now, and then next week they'll decide to close the conservation areas, and next week after that they'll decide to close the sidewalks. Um, 
you know, I think that it's, it's really uh, excessive. And I think, you know, certainly notifying people and more signage would be good um, to remind people about properly distancing themselves. But uh, I'm not really in favor of, uh, of the action that the Board of Health took. Uh, may I respond, John? Sure. Um, so, yeah, uh, Dean, I, uh, anyone who was there last night, I, I argued strongly against this action by the, the, the Board of Health, but it was a unanimous action by, by, by the, uh, the Board of Health. And um, we don't have the, the, the power to overturn it in the, in the, in the current health of emergency. Uh, we, you know, we could make it more difficult, but I don't think that's the, that, that's the right action. Um, that, this is just my opinion, right? Um, but the, uh, the the thing I would like to do um, is to support them. Uh, so th th they were very much um, uh, the board of health was very much influenced by um, the recommendations from the health department. I'm uh, sorry, from the recreation department. And um, um, you know, I, I, uh, I'm also liaison to the recreation commission, and I'm w wondering, as I said in my remarks earlier. If there are other alternatives here, so that people have seen some problems here. I don't think that the, the the problems, you know, of possible transmission in era were common, but they did exist from time to time. And um, uh, you know, I, I'm, you know, I, I don't have a corner on, on ideas, and I, I would like to the, the, to work with the uh, recreation department to to brainstorm on ways that we. Um, could make for less crowding. You know, uh, I, you know, I I have some ideas, and I, I don't think this is the, the proper place to bring them forward. But um, uh, I, I think tonight we have to, to have to support the the board of health. My concern is that this puts much more pressure on the arboretum because if we can't go to Nara, arboretum is the next place. Yeah, yes, and the, the Board of Health is keeping their eye on that as well, um, uh, and they, they they may try to reduce parking or close that as well. Um, so um, th there there is a small part of the Board of Health that would like to close everything, all conservation lands and everything, but that seems not to be uh, even close to a majority opinion in the Board of Health. Um, and that wasn't the recommendation to them um, uh, uh, from from Tom Tidman um, uh, today. Um, so and so that the board seems inclined to keep recreation lands open, but I, you know, as Dean said and I said, I, I'm not sure that that is a, is an equitable solution for all the residents in town. Um, uh, so I, I have I have some concerns about that and. Um, the, the, the virus actually doesn't transmit that easily outside um, uh, people. I, I, I sent two reports to the, the Board of Health. I spent three hours there last week um, monitoring, and I documented things, uh, the, the, the situation at, at NARA. And there, there are not a, a lot of cases. I, I Actually, personally, I saw none. Um, but there, there are reports of some. They're, they're rare. Um, uh, but they exist. You know, I, I don't. I don't know what what to say. Uh, um, it, it's a complicated situation, and every, you know, everybody's trying to do the right thing. And well, I so, haven't uh, seen. Uh, I haven't seen more traffic at the end of Spring Hill trying to get into the Spring Hill conservation land. No, I, I actually uh, uh, took a walk on. Um, you know, I, I took a walk at the Pratt's Book Land today and didn't encounter anyone. Usually. When we walk there, we do encounter people. And I, I walked over the weekend on, on Sunday, which is the nicest day, up Great Hill, starting at Piper Road, uh, you know, to the top, around, and back, um, and didn't encounter anyone either. Um, so. Um. Okay, so we have a motion on the floor. Is everyone ready to vote? Uh, I just have a few comments. Uh, you know, the I think the board... Uh, there was a comment made last night about the difference between recreation areas and, and conservation trails. Um, I think that was one thing that the board was considering. The motion to close the conservation trails didn't get a second. So uh, the state has closed the uh, 
parking lots. They're keeping all the state reservations and uh, parks open, is my understanding. Um, but they have closed the parking lots uh, uh, to those facilities. So they seem to think that isn't something that helps. Um, so in this circumstance, I would uh, support the Board of Health's request that we uh, close the parking out at NARA. Um, I do think, again, the statute gives both the Board of Health and the selectmen to um, take emergency measures to control the spread of infection. So I think we should uh, work together on these things. I certainly don't dispute the board's vote last night, but um, I, I think we should be consulted and, and uh, weigh in on these things. So um, uh, those are kind of my thoughts on it. I have not been out at NARA. I was asking what was happening out there a week ago, and my understanding was that it wasn't a big issue, so that there had been some incidents, but that, that they weren't happening anymore. And then we get this me uh, memo from the uh, Recreation Department asking them to shut it down. So it was kind of a surprise to me. But I, I do agree that we should uh, uh, support the Board of Health and... Uh, and uh, authorize the town to uh, put up emergency uh, no parking restrictions. Dean, Dean, do you want to call the roll? Yes, I will. Uh, Mr. Benson? Yes. Mr. Martin? <coughs> Aye. Mr. Barry? Aye. Ms. Gardner? Aye. Mr. Trotter? Aye. It's unanimous. Uh, all right. Are there other issues on this? On this? John? Uh, specifically on, um, uh, um, are we talking about uh, item one, the continued discussion on COVID-19 and updates? Yes. Yes, we're on, uh, yeah. Um, 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 I've heard, we've heard, uh, gotten emails from several committees um, wishing to meet uh, the Volunteer Coordinating Committee, um, the Health Insurance Trust, um, and the um, Acton um, Housing Authority. And the um, Dark Park Committee. Okay. Um, any others? Okay. Um, the, um, the, uh, the, the, uh, you know, people seem to be, uh, following our, um, recommendation that, you know, we, uh, we're trying to keep, um, um, uh, remote meetings to one per night. The VCC indicated they wanted to meet once in May, once in June. The Health Insurance Trust was specific. They would want a meeting at April 30th at 8.15 in the morning. Um, and the Acton uh, Housing Authority on April 21st at 4 p.m. I don't know about the dog park. There was a flash from Jim Snyder Grant of the Commission on um, Disabilities. Uh, uh, disabilities would like to meet. Um, so we would add that. So um, I would move that um, we authorize meetings. Um, uh, the Volunteer Coordinating Committee, the Health Insurance Trust, the Act and Housing Authority, the Dog Park Committee, and the Commission on Disabilities, all to be scheduled uh, through the um, Office of the Town Manager. Is there a second? Uh, second. Okay. Uh, motion oh, motion made and seconded. Further discussion? David? Uh, John, first, uh, just a friendly amendment. I think the Acton Housing Authority, you actually meant the Acton Community Housing Corporation. Um, did we get, um, Peter, um, did yeah. you receive a letter from Kelly Cronin? I got an email from Kelly Cronin asking uh, that the Housing Authority oh, be able to meet. That so, was the uh, fortune. I think, yeah, last week we approved a, a meeting of the Acton Community Housing Corporation. Okay. Yeah, they're technically Sorry, on the town board, but they need to go through John to set up. They don't have the Zoom capability, so um, they uh, they uh, they need to go through John, which I referred them to. Uh, Jim Snyder Grant says that the Disabilities Com Commission on Disabilities would like to meet during the day on Thursday. If he's talking about this week, they still got to post their meetings, right? I mean, you got to have a forty-eight. Uh, our advance notice of meeting. So I'm not sure that's possible. Um, 
I'm in favor of granting them the ability to meet, but I just, in reading his comment, he's talking about this Thursday. It may be too late for that. And, well, he said, yes, the meeting has been posted. Oh, it has. Okay. Okay, so motion made and seconded. Further discussion? All those in uh, favor? Can just, wait, can, wait, can I just ask John Majorati, can uh, the IT handle five more committees? Are you okay with that? I, I, I think if with the caveat that they work with our office and that and if in doing so we can determine whether, you know, which night works best, I, I you know, if they probably spread out I'll be the same night, then no, that wouldn't work out, but I, I have a feeling that they're not. So we can make well, it. Okay. Yeah. Two, Dean, of that, two of those were during the day. Yeah. Dean, will you call? Well, Mr. Benson. Aye. Mr. Barry. Hi. Mr. Gardner. Mrs. Gardner. <laughs> Mrs. Gardner. Sorry. Right. Hey. <laughs> Mr. Martin. Aye. Mr. Chotter. Aye. Unanimous. Uh, as we're discussing uh, meetings, um, can you hear me? Let me. Yes. Let me get, get John, you know, there are. Uh, boards that have meetings scheduled already, uh, hearings uh, on permits and things like that. Um, it looks like that act that the governor signed gives each chair the ability to, I don't know, I think they're put off automatically, but each chair has the ability to schedule a meeting, I think, without even contacting the other members. So um, I don't know whether the planning board or the zoning board of appeals, uh, whether we should check in with them and see what their what their plans are, or if, if, if boards have uh, mandatory permit hearings scheduled, how are we handling that? Yes, yeah, so we're we're collaborating or co uh, we're working on on that um, with the applicants, and and many of them have asked to postpone, um, and but I think they did. The, the Conservation Commission had a meeting last week, and know that there's some things that um, are procedural uh, that they are trying to continue working on. So we're going to continue to to look at it on a case by case basis. Um, I, this board has a, a hearing for the Post Office Square, um, the project of Post Office Square that was supposed to be the 13th, uh, but since the board I believe is meeting on the 14th instead. We're working on the applicant to reschedule to a later time in April. Um, so I think it's, it's just more coordination and making sure that, and, and everyone's doing that. The land use folks are all on top of it and making sure that if there's a hearing coming up that we schedule it and, and figure out how to run it or we postpone it. Yeah, well, my, my input on that would be for anything that requires um, a special permit. Uh, I would urge the town, at least from my perspective, to um, ask the applicant to postpone it until after the emergency is over. It doesn't seem to me. We just got an email today complaining about Post Office Square. Um, uh, it doesn't seem to me we can hold virtual hearings when uh, you know we need a lot of citizen input and, uh, and exchanges back and forth of these kind of hearings. So I would ask applicants to uh, postpone hearings until after the emergency is over. Most most have preferred taking that route, so we will continue to uh, pursue that. Okay, so we voted on that. Um, I, I, are there other issues? I are there a couple. I just wanted to raise the tax issue. Um, no, could, could um, the, the yeah, I guess the, yeah, yeah, the tax issue would be yeah, would be is appropriate now. Yeah. I mean, I think this fits within the, the general discussion. It's, yep. a, it's a bill that was passed last week because of the emergency. So it allows us to uh, reschedule the uh, due date for the real estate taxes from May 1st to June 1st and uh, waive all interest and penalties as long as bills are paid by June 30th. Um, John sent us a memo on that today. The town's recommending that it happen, um, assuming that they, we can uh, uh, absorb that whatever financial hit there would be from that. Um, I would recommend that we do that sooner than later. And, uh, you know, maybe I, I would make a motion tonight that we do that. So. Are you making a motion? 
Yeah, I'll move that we, uh, pursuant to the governor's, uh, pursuant to the uh, legislation that passed last week, we we uh, move the due date for real estate taxes from May 1st to June 30th and um, waive any penalties and interest uh, as long as bills are paid. I'm sorry, move it from May 1st to June 1st, the due date, and waive any interest and penalties as long as the bills are paid by June 30th. Is there a second? I'll second that. Second. Um, okay. M motion made and seconded. Discussion. Yeah. It, it, would there would it be appropriate um, uh, for us to seek the input of the finance committee on this? Um, they're meeting next um, next Wednesday night. Peter. Um. You know. I. I I got to pull a calendar up here. I, I again, I'm. Uh, I think the sooner we get the notice out to people, the better. Um, I, I do uh, see. I do think that you know the FinCom probably should have input on this. So we'd be looking at next Wednesday, the fifteenth. Uh, they're meeting on the fifteenth. Yeah. Yeah, I'm looking at uh, the Department of Revenue put out a notice, uh, and then they amended it. They first said the town has to mail notice, uh, which they have a form to all taxpayers telling them of this information. They amended that to, to allow it to be done uh, by posting the notice in a prominent location on the city, on the town's website, by posting information on official municipal social media accounts, and by utilizing technologies such as reverse 911. Uh, I guess I'm okay with the FinCom weighing in on this. Uh, we, what, well, we have to wait until after they weigh in to take a vote. That'd be one question that I would ask. Um, and I would recommend that if we uh, do not implement this until after the FinCom's uh, um, weighing in on it, that we, we do a reverse 911 uh, it seems important enough to me to let people know that they don't have to pay their taxes, uh, you know, until June first. So, well, I, I would imagine. You know, think about this mechanically. Um, you know, um, uh, you know, m most of the people, if they have mortgages, the their taxes are escrowed and are paid by the mortgage holder, um, whatever their, their their bank is. So, um, I don't know what the you know. I assume that you know, you know, the banks are probably all set to go on May one. As to how that plays out, I don't know. Well, okay, is, that's is a good it, point. I mean, I, I didn't have that with my particular uh, bank, but um, so that's a good point. I mean, if we if we waive it, um, I guess the banks wouldn't have to pay until June first either, right? I don't know if we can make exceptions for. No, it, it would uh, be the you know the banks the, the banks pay on behalf of the of the of the property owner. I, I'd yeah. like to, uh, I, I'd like to make a point. Um, you know, as much as I would like to get the input from the finance committee, I'm not sure that this should wait a week and then have another vote after that. Um, I'm, I'm thinking about a lot of seniors who, uh, have paid off their mortgages. They pay their, uh, their taxes themselves. Mm -hmm. I remember when I used to work at Town Hall, there'd be a line of seniors the last possible day coming in because, you know, they're all trying to uh, to manage their money as, as closely as possible. And um, I think that I would prefer to vote on this to approve it right now um, because I think that, you know, it is going to give uh, people, not only seniors, but everyone, a feeling of relief that, uh, okay, there's a bill I don't have to worry about for an additional 30 days. Um, you know, I think effectively, if we're waiting till finance committee votes on this, and then if they have questions, it could be delayed even further. Um, it could uh, obviate uh, what we're trying to do. So uh, you know, I, I would rather that we vote on this now and move ahead with it. Anyone is, else? Is it is it possible to um, uh, amend this motion to say contingent on finance committee approval? And so that the approval would come and it would go into effect next Wednesday evening. I, 
don't think we want to be in a situation where the Board of Selectmen is contingent on the Finance Committee. Okay. And uh, John, the, the, the financial staff recommended this to us, right? I mean, is that the memo you sent us? Yeah, uh, thank you. Yeah, we, we did. We received a, uh, about a dozen questions from residents whether uh, we were going to be allowing for uh, delays in payments. And we think that we'll probably get more uh, as we get closer to the end of the month. And we think if, if we postpone it by 30 days, uh, that would be something that we could handle. Uh, as as Mr. Benson mentioned, more than half of the um, properties pay through their bank uh, escrowed tax payments, and we've already reached out to those banks, making sure that they pay those soon. So even if we extended it, those banks, just as a matter of course, have May 1st as a de deadline, and they probably would just turn the money over. That you're understanding. I, I hope I hope so. I don't know. I think <laughs> if we change it, I'm not sure that we can make them. Uh, but uh, I hope that they would just stick with the, the original plan. What what financial implications to the town? I mean, do we have? Uh, I'm assuming we could still pay all our bills if the finance uh, team is recommending this. What what uh, what financial implications might this have? Some interest that we would not get if we had the money in the bank. Yeah, I think I think that based on their analysis, that uh, what we believe we already received through um, the the banks, that we were comfortable uh, allowing it to be delayed, uh, and that we'd be able to to handle the year end expenses and everything else that we need to to, to worry about. Okay, motion made and seconded. Any further discussion? There, there is there is one member of the public who would like to speak. Okay. How do we recognize? Go, go ahead, uh, this, is, uh, this is Tara from West Acton, and I, I wanted to comment on the access to public spaces. Uh, I am in support of doing this contingent upon finance, but you approve it. And then if the, they don't go along with it, which I think they will, um, but uh, I think that, that perhaps maybe ask them to, if there's an emergency that they think that, they don't want to do it to then call an emergency board like a meeting just out of respect for them. But I, um, I really about the access. What you do when you close the parking lots is you, you make it so that the privileged people who live next to it have full access as if it's a private park. The people up on the North Shore were dying to close those parking lots, not because of health issues, but because of snob issues. So I, re I urge you to reconsider the closing the parking lots. Thank you. Okay. Anyone else? All right, motion made and seconded. And the motion is to delay the property tax until June. Well, yeah, June 1st. And the penalty and waive the penalties and interest until uh, for bills that are paid by June 30th. Okay. All those in favor? Do we have uh, to do Oh. Sorry. <laughs> Roll call. Roll call. All right, Mr. Barry. Aye. Mr. Martin. Aye. Ms. Gardner. Aye. Mr. Benson. Aye. Mr. Trotter. Aye. Unanimous. Thank you. Are there any other issues under COVID? Um. Yeah. Just um. Uh, John, uh, uh, thank you for um, adjusting the website to put uh, prominently on page one um, the um, early voting by mail information and the you know with the necessary links to get into the um, the, the application. Um, one further suggestion: it's on the left. You keep it on the left side um, of the of the. Uh, page one of the website um if you could um see that it's um on the left side the second item uh, immediate be, immediately below um the COVID update of the day so it has a you know a permanent place and doesn't uh notch down yeah we, we can um we can adjust that that's a good okay suggestion. that's great thank you we'll do thank that. you 
Uh, jo- Joan, may I uh, ask Peter a follow-up question on one of his remarks? Sure. Uh, Peter, you were saying earlier that you didn't think we w- should be able to do uh, uh, hearings remotely. If this situation goes through the summer, do you think that should be the case even that long? Uh, the bill actually does allow hearings to be held remotely. That makes that pretty clear. Um, you know, uh, there are other kind of public forums. Or, I mean, the pl- if the planning board wanted to do a hearing, we've got a zoning bylaw change coming up. If the planning board wanted to do a, a hearing on a on a zoning bylaw, that's a little different than a permit thing. So you might consider having that by remote. Uh, but yeah, I think any anything that requires a special permit or um, uh, a, you know even the zoning board uh, variance. Um, to me, I mean, I suppose we could see how long it goes and rethink it. But uh, uh, to me, holding a remote hearing on a uh, on a on a, a public hearing like that and trying to get in input from all the citizens who might be interested in it. Um, is going to be very awkward to say the least, and, and probably not very satisfactory. But that's okay, so, I, so I, I guess we can wait and see if the uh, state of emergency gets extended further. And 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 if if so, you know, then maybe consider having the, some of those uh, virtually. But uh, for now, we try to postpone. I, I guess that makes sense. Th- thank you. Yeah, I, I actually think under the bill, it's up to the chair to decide. So, um, but uh, that would be my recommendation to the chairs. Okay. Any further discussion on that, John? John M. <laughs> oh, um, on the matter in general. Yeah. Uh, th- just one note, um, we-, we talked already about Narrow Park, um, the Board of Selectmen traditionally has the concert in June, uh, we have a huge celebration on the 4th of July, again, I mentioned last week that we're going to start making decisions about those things, I don't think we need to make them this week, but we'll need to make them before the end of the month, I believe, because there's, oh. there's a ton of planning that goes into those things, so just something else to keep on, on our radars. Well, our sponsor for the Selectmans has left us, right? Well, we can certainly come back with with more details on on how that was going to be brought forward again. I think it was still in the works that would would happen again. But again, we need to, there's a lot of things that are on hold right now um, as we determine the length of this uh, state of emergency. Okay. Shall we move on to the drive through windows? It's been brought to my attention that in this time, not having drive up windows at the CVS and the, some of the restaurants in town is causing some concern. And I know we've brought drive up windows to town meeting in the past and they haven't been successful but I'd like to have a sense of the board Madam Chair yes Um, yeah I I commend the town manager and the planning staff with that memo that they sent out today um, sort of recouping what's gone on in the past uh, in regards to drive-ups. Um, and I think that's a great starting point. A, uh, you know, I've, I think I've gone on record in the past saying that I, I feel that we should allow these sort of drive-ups. And, uh, and certainly the research they did was great. Um, personally, I, I agree with, with Selectman Barry that you know, this is the kind of thing that really can't be discussed in great detail virtually. It really needs to have a, a real open uh, discussion with people physically in the room, um, especially considering it's been voted down in the past. But uh, personally, I, I think we should keep this on the, uh, on the forefront 
Um, my time frame on this is I, I think with all the things that are going on, if we could uh, bring this forward uh, for the next April uh, 2021 town meeting, I think that's probably a realistic time frame to, to consider at this point. Anyone else? Yes, Madam Chair. David? Um, yeah, so um, two, two things for me. Um, one, first, I, I am, even though I've opposed this in the past as a just a, a resident, um, I, you know, I think I would be in favor now of having drive-ups at, at pharmacies in a way that's similar to what uh, the planning department memo uh, proposed. One of the reasons I've been against them in the past is that um, when CVS built their building at Kelly's Corner, um, they really refused to work with the town um, on that. Uh, their building meets the letter but not the spirit of the zoning in that area. We had tried to work with them to, try to get a, a building that's accessible um, you know, walking up to the building, but the, the entrance to the building is at the back, so it's really designed for driving to the building, um, which is fine. It's fine to drive to the building, but it should also be fine to walk to the building. And, then, um, and uh, you know, I, I had felt that, you know, they didn't accommodate the town in the least little bit with, with walking access. Um, and, you know, why would we want to accommodate them for drive-through access? And so that's what I felt in the past. But I do understand in, in this kind of situation, and, you know, often the reason that you're going to the pharmacy is as you're sick and you may not want to go in, or you have uh, sick children or a disabled relative in the car and you may not want to or be able to go in. And so I understand that. And I, I would be in favor of, uh, of that, I think. Um uh, as far as drive up for um, uh, restaurants, I think they're a bit more controversial myself. Um, I'm, I'm not sure I would be in favor of uh, drive ups for, for restaurants and, you know, the, the feedback at town meeting in the past and, the, uh, um, and, and things. I think many townspeople are also not in favor of just having people idling in their cars waiting for their cup of coffee in the morning. Um, and so... Um, uh, however we approach this, I would like to see uh, two different um, uh, uh, articles at whatever town meeting that we, we take this up and, and two different, um, they could be done in the same hearing, uh, but, but, but two different proposals to, you know, to hear from residents as to whether they prefer uh, 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 or not drive-ups at pharmacies and whether they prefer or not drive-ups at restaurants. Thank you. Okay. Anyone else? Uh, yeah, I, uh, you know, in order for us even to put, uh, I believe, the uh, a zoning bylaw amendment on the warrant, uh, the planning board has to have a hearing and make a recommendation to us. So it may even be possible to bring something like this to uh, the regular town meeting, depending on when the emergency ends and what the scheduling of time limit is, or possibly in the fall if we have a separate fall town meeting. But um, yeah, I mean, assuming the planning board holds the public hearing and makes a recommendation, uh, thinking on this whole thing, you know, this emergency has changed a lot of people's thinking on a lot of things. And uh, I, I think in this particular circumstance, um, having to actually go into the store um, does um, create problems. So uh, I'm in favor of, of uh, asking the planning department to move forward with the public hearings uh, at the planning board and bring it back to town meeting. When are you talking about, I mean, we can't hold any public hearings until after the emergency orders are, are lifted. So I, I would concur with Dean. Let's look for, um, you know, you know, you know, uh, taking it from the, um, you know, going out and working backwards, let's look to annual town meeting, you know, 21 and um, queue things up going backwards from there. But does that make sense? Yeah, yeah my, sense, okay with that. my sense is the board would like to pursue the issue and the timing depends on many things. OK, 
Okay, I, I don't think we need to vote on anything. No, uh, we do. I'll make a motion to request the planning department to uh, bring the issue up with the planning board and, uh, you know, uh, have them um, consider it. Is there a second? Second. Okay, motion made and seconded. Any further discussion? Oh, please call the roll, Dean. Mr. Barry. Aye. Mr. Martin. Aye. Ms. Gardner. Aye. Mr. Benson. Aye. Mr. Trotter. Aye. Unanimous. Okay, thank you. What's next? The uh, craftsman, the, the fee waiver for Craftsman Village at 184 Main Street. Okay, we have a request for a fee waiver, and this is because of the request by the fire department for a hydrant and the expense of that. John, you're nodding your head. <laughs> That is the request. Okay. Yes. Discussion? I'm okay. We are granting the request for the waiver. Okay. Is there a second? Second. Uh, I'd like to just ask the town manager a question. Go ahead. Um, uh, John, do you agree with what in this letter that that there is uh, another, and this, you do know if the fire department agrees, but there's another uh, uh, hydrant uh, that's uh, close enough to be effective and that this additional hydrant is not necessary? Um, I, I know that the fire department had required it, and I would have to, um, I'm sorry, I... I'd have to get back to you. I've been I haven't been focused on this, but I can. <laughs> so yeah, I I I don't mind granting the fee waiver. I, I would be in favor of it, but I'd like to hear, even if it means that we, uh, unless there's a problem delaying it, I'd rather wait to hear from the fire department that this uh, a hydrant really isn't necessary. So um, that would be my preference. John, I, I believe Mr. O'Hagan's in the in the audience, um, or in the virtual audience. Well, let's recognize him. Uh, Mark, can you do that? I am doing it. Oh. On mute. Can you hear me now? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Thank you very much. Um, what the uh, the request is? The, the fire department is aware of the one across the street. They said uh, that they would like to have a, another one located uh, behind the buildings. Uh, this wasn't it wasn't on the initial plans. It wasn't a part of all the initial approvals. Uh, the buildings have a sprinkler system as well. Um, you know, as I, I said in the memo, you know, we honestly um, we don't we don't understand why they need another one. But if it's something that, that it's important to them, then it's important to us. So we just uh, we're recognizing their request to add. The extra hydrant and just seeking to for some town support to offset the cost of it uh, about half the cost our cost is going to be about sixteen thousand dollars to add it because we need to enlarge um uh the, the water lines from what was going to be a, a two inch line to a six inch line which is a substantial jump and then obviously the cost of the hydrant and the connections and everything that goes along with it so uh it's about a sixteen thousand dollar expense we're asked, uh, we asked for relief for affordable units, which would be roughly $8,000. So we're absorbing an additional $8,000 as it is. Thank right. you. Okay. Uh, so uh, just for my clarity, you, you have um, no dispute with putting in the hydrant. I, I guess I misunderstood your letter. You have no dispute with putting in the hydrant. Uh, you just want um, uh, the, the, the fees to be $8,000 less to set offset the cost by 50%. Yeah, that's the request. If, that's, if, the, the, if it's, like I said, if it's important to the fire department, then it's important to us. So we'll, uh, okay. we, we will support it. Yes, we do support it. Okay. There, is a, uh, there is a memo in the packet um, from uh, Deputy Chief Vanderhoof to uh, Mark 
fire department is requesting that a hydrant be installed for the purpose of water supply for firefighting. I'm assuming they made the decision that uh, for fire safety purposes, it's a good idea to have a hydrant there. Correct. Oh, uh, th thank you, Peter. I didn't scroll down. Thank you. Okay. Is there a motion? Uh, I think um, the motion was made, right? And seconded. Yeah, I think John seconded, right? Yes. Okay. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Dean? Yeah. Mr. Barry? Yes. Mr. Martin? Aye. Ms. Gardner? Yes. Yeah. Aye. Mr. Benson? Aye. Mr. Trotter? Aye. Unanimous. Thank you. Thank you very much. I really appreciate it. All right. Good luck. Have a great night. More people should listen in on these. It's uh, <laughs> it's really a wonderful lesson in local governing. So I do appreciate it. I don't live in Acton, but I do appreciate the time you guys put into this stuff. So thank you very much. Have a great night and uh, stay safe. Okay. Windows fee waiver. I think, have we covered everything on the agenda? Yeah, I, yeah, yes, we have, um, and we're due to meet again next Tuesday night, um, and that would include a, an executive session on Piper. <clears throat> right. So, John, if we could uh, st perhaps start the executive session at, at 6 for our meeting uh, ahead of our regular meeting, which would start at 7. Sure, of course. And um, just speaking of scheduling... Uh, we've been meeting and the board's been meeting weekly uh, Tuesdays, uh, primarily because the board of health's been meeting on Mondays and uh, not to interfere with that. Uh, mm -hmm. If we are scheduling things out for the rest of the month, do you want to stay on that track? Yes. Okay. Perfect. All right, gentlemen, is there a motion? A uh, motion we adjourn? Yes. Second? Second. Motion made and seconded to adjourn. Dean, <laughs> now, we're keeping Mr. you busy. Yep, Mr. Barry. Aye. Mr. Martin. Aye. Mr. Benson. Aye. Ms. Gardner. Aye. Mr. Trotter. Aye. Unanimous. Thank you very much, all. For all right, stay safe. Thank you. Have a good week.